Hi everyone, so finally I thought I'd better hurry up and start to answer some of the questions from the Ask Lisa blog post because you were all so fantastic and put so many brilliant questions up. But I've just been super busy the last few weeks and haven't had time to film them so I really want to crack on and try and do a few of them now. So as well as all the questions that went on the Ask Lisa blog post, I also looked at a lot of the questions that come through on YouTube and via the website, because obviously I don't really get time to answer them, or most of them anyway. Um, and I've been very, very efficient and put a document together. So I've got all the main topics that come up. So I've got kind of your working life, aspiring makeup artists, skin, base, foundation, eyes, um, general um, stuff about me that people have asked. So I'm going to try and do a few of them today. Obviously, I can't do all of them, but if I could do sort of six or seven, I can always do the others um, later on. Okay, so um, working life question How much preparation do you do before a makeup job? This is it's different for every job. It really, really depends what the job's going to be. Um, if I've never worked with a photographer before, and I'll, I probably know his work a bit, but if I haven't worked with him before, I'll go and look at all of his work online or her work online and just kind of get really acquainted with the kind of thing they're doing, um, that, that that person's doing. Um, also, I will, if there's any references that have been mentioned or any mood boards, I'll go and just take pictures off the internet and just look and I've got lots of books here and I'll, I'll just sort of do that kind of preparation. Um, most of the time there's not that much preparation because often I know the photographer already and then they'll give me a hint about what the job is but mainly I decide the makeup on the day. Once you're there and you see the clothes and you, you, know, you chat, it's kind of experience as well, you kind of get used to being able to kind of come up with ideas on the day. The big bit of preparation for me is the kit because the kit's different for every single job I do. I've got such a big studio full of makeup and there's kind of a basic kit, there's a kit for different jobs. So we'll think about what the job's going to be. It can be a one case job, two cases, three cases of makeup and what's in those cases will be different depending on the kind of job I'm doing. So if I'm going to do a red carpet for example and go to somebody's hotel room, I'll take a very small kit because I have a rough idea what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm not going to need green body paint, for example, if it's a you know quite a sophisticated red carpet. And also there won't be that much room, whereas if you're in the studio, you've got loads and loads of room, you can spread out tons and tons of makeup. Um, you know, it's ridiculous to go to, say, a red carpet with five cases full of makeup because <laughs> there mightn't be any room. So yeah, so that's the kind of thing that takes most of the time up going through, thinking about pigments I've got, colours I'm going to use, um, yeah, so the kit is um, different for every single job and that takes a while to organise. Um, what do you wear when working? Um, it's all about comfort. Um, most makeup artists, when you're actually on the job, I don't really wear any makeup or I wear very, very minimal makeup. I'll just maybe cover a spot or two. And once I get to the job, I can always put a little bit more makeup on if I want to. But the morning's so busy with getting everything ready and getting there. Clothes-wise, I will wear something comfortable. Um, if I'm going to be on my feet all day, I won't wear heels. I'll wear something that I know I'm going to be able to, if it's on location, need to be warm, I'll have loads of layers. Um, if I'm in the studio, you know, some studios I know are quite hot and other ones aren't so bad. And depending on the sort of lighting they're going to use... Yeah, it, 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 I just sort of, it's comfort really, and it's not about looking gorgeous and glamorous, it's about me making somebody else look gorgeous and glamorous, and that's when I'm really in my best comfort zone, when I'm doing somebody else's face, that's what I do, um, that's what I'm best at doing, and um, I just want to be comfortable and feel in a really good work mode. Um, aspiring makeup artists, oh, I've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of questions about starting out in makeup. I'm actually just going to do probably another quick film after this one because that's going to take 10 minutes in itself and I don't want this film to be too long. Um, okay, eyes. One of the big questions with eyes was about colours of eyeshadow. So I've got green eyes, what colour eyeshadow shall I wear? I've got blue eyes, what colour eyeshadow shall I wear? My philosophy on this is that if your makeup the type of makeup you're trying to achieve is about making your eye colour really stand out and that's your main aim, then 
there's just a really simple philosophy of sort of the opposite colour. So if it's very, very dark, almost black eyes, you've got really dark brown, you know, black is opposite, white's opposite to black, so that would be silvers and those sorts of colours. With blue, blue is opposite to orange, so orange means literally orange, or um, warm browns, golden browns, um, all of those sorts of colours, and bronzes. Um, green is opposite to red, so red could be reddy purples, you know, maroons, plums, that sort of thing. But to be honest, I f- really do feel that makeup's not just about making the colour of your eyes look as blue or as brown as possible. And other things can do that in your makeup. Your blusher can do that. Your lipstick can do that. I just think, depending on the look you're going for, don't really worry about so much about which colour you've got to wear. You've got to wear this colour, you've got to wear that colour. It feels a little bit old-fashioned in a way. I know that magazines, you know, years and years ago would always say, with blue eyes, you must wear brown eyeshadow. But don't think that really applies anymore and I certainly never consider that when I'm doing a makeup on somebody um sometimes I might do but it's not my first consideration and um I think wonderful things can happen when you experiment a little bit more and you try different things out and um I wouldn't get too hung up on it quite honestly but if it is your main concern about making yourself look fantastic is to make your eyes look as whatever colour they are, as accentuated as possible, then I'd say just go for the opposite colour. The other eye question was about under eye concealing. This came up so much that I definitely got to do a separate film on this because I've got a lot to say about it. It's, you know, the different shapes of under eye areas, the genetic factors, all of that is going to take me 10, 15 minutes and I just kind of feel like... I will address it and there was just so many questions about it so as well as the becoming a makeup artist thing that feels like a separate issue um okay your nail routine and um base coats and top coats somebody asked me well my nail routine is not very good um i haven't had a manicure probably for about a year i know that sounds terrible and new yorkers will be horrified um just because i haven't had time i've I'll go for a facial before I go for a manicure, Um, so I just haven't had time. And the other thing I do is I kind of feel like I'm maintaining them all the time. So every time I have a hot shower or a hot bath, I will push them back, push the cuticles back rather, while they're really soft, because it's so easy then to kind of make sure the cuticles are in good nick. And I'll keep a little bottle of solar oil next to the bed. Whenever I think, before I go to sleep, I just put a tiny bit on the cuticles, just sort of rub it. And the skin around the thing takes, you know, five seconds to do. But I think it does make a difference. Then I'll just file them. Sometimes on jobs, I'll just say to the manicurist, oh, can I just file my nails? And then I just paint them. I use um, sticky, actually it's here because I just painted them. I use sticky start by Creative Nails as my base coat. The top coat I use is by Zoya, Z-O-Y-A. And um, I really like that one. And I change the colour a lot and um, I am going to have a manicure actually because I'm going to New York soon. I'll have a manicure when I get there. More likely to have a manicure when I'm on holiday uh, than during the week. However, I do feel like I maintain the cuticle area and I do feel like I maintain the, um, you know, the skin around the nails. But I do it in a way that kind of fits in with my lifestyle. Cleaning makeup brushes. Should I invest in a brush cleaner or is a mild shampoo good enough? Well... I personally like to use a conditioning shampoo. I find the cheaper the conditioning shampoo, the better. I buy a really cheap one in the local store or um, I just buy whatever's sort of, you know, one of those two-in-one kind of quite cheap ones. And I just find them to be fantastic, probably because the chemicals are a little bit harsher in the cheaper ones. And also they've got lots of silicon in and lots of sort of conditioning properties that just make the brushes look really nice. I prefer to do that. I put a tiny bit in the palm of my hand I wash around the brush, wash them a few times, especially with a foundation brush. It can take three, four washes, you know, because they tend to stick to the um, to the fibres. Um, the most important thing I find when washing brushes, especially with the big tapered brushes, like something like this, you know, my prized possession, my Suku face brush, which cost an absolute fortune. When I've washed that one, I will um, chuck out the water and then really pull it back into shape. And that is so important. Even with small brushes like 217s, you have to pull them back into shape. Because if you don't, you leave them splayed. After a few washes and being left splayed a, a few times, they just never get that lovely tapered shape back. So really just pull them into shape. 
you know, before they're dry. And sometimes halfway through the drying, if I walk past, I'll just pick it up and sort of pull it back into shape a little, even a little bit more. Um, and they do take a while to dry that way, but better than splaying them all out. They'll dry quicker, but they'll just be a horrible shape and they'll never be as good. So um, as for brush cleaner, I do use brush cleaner on jobs. I don't use it as a way of cleaning my brushes at night, but I would if I was on a job. And I tend to have enough brushes that I don't need to keep using the same one. But if I went and I had on location, I had less brushes, I would just clean with MAC or make it forever. I don't mind. Um, there's lots of good brush cleaners out there. So that's how I like to do that. Um, what's the best light to apply makeup in? I'd say daylight, absolutely, daylight. It's the harshest light you can get. It If your makeup looks good in daylight, I would say it's gonna look good in any light. Um, just because you can see, you know, you can match up. And if I ever go to like a red carpet thing and I get to an actress's hotel and it's about to go dark, even before we've had a discussion about anything, about what she's gonna wear, what the hair's gonna be, try and get over to the window and match up the foundation in daylight because then I'll know if it's matched up in daylight I know it's going to look good um, later on because often when you're in the bathroom or in you know artificial light you can't really see the kind of skin tones properly so yeah I say um, daylight if you can if you can't daylight then a good sort of magnifying mirror with good light you just need good even light that is um, obviously not too yellowy um, I mean, if you're going out at night, it's kind of different. But then, having said that, you know, you might be photographed and you want to look good. So um, if you can, daylight, it, it's the best light. And I, in studios, often even when they've got good lights, if it's light and I can move the makeup mirror over to the light, I'll use, I'd rather be over in nice, even daylight than use the makeup mirrors in the studios. Uh, what are your thoughts on MAC and why don't you use it as much as other makeup artists? This... Loads of people have asked me this. Um, I've emailed me about it as well. I'm not really sure because I do use MAC products um, and I have done in lots of my films. And certainly when MAC launched, when I was starting my career, it was a godsend, you know, for makeup artists. It was the first time you could really buy certain colours and certain textures without having to go to professional makeup shops. So that was... I've always liked MAC. I mean, I don't have all MAC in my kit because it, the type of work I do, I need to have a bit of everything, really. And um, it, it's, it just works better for me. Um, I don't know the colours. I know lots of people say to me sometimes in comments and things, oh, the colour that you used by whoever it was, what's the good dupe for it in MAC? And I have to admit, I don't know all the names in MAC of all the eyeshadows. I know the famous ones, but... You know the way sometimes you speak to people who work, I've never worked at MAC, but you speak to people who work at MAC um, or have worked at MAC and they know, oh, this pretty brown and this brown. I don't know that. I go to MAC when I've got jobs. Um, I go to MAC every now and again. I buy stuff I like. I'll put it in a palette. I'll have it in my kit and I'll say, oh, I'll, I, that lovely purple that I've got, that MAC, but I won't know what the name of it is. Um, so, yeah, I know some people who you know, have worked at MAC, know all the names, but I really haven't mastered that yet. But I do use MAC, I like it. Um, but my kit really is a mixture of absolutely every single brand. Um, I think that kind of feels like quite a long film now. So I'm going to stop there because I'm also going out tonight and I need to go. But um, I think this is something that now that I've got all the questions in a document, and if you want to add any to the original blog post, please do, because they can all go on here. And whenever I get time, I'm going to just answer them. And also, it's really nice to have them all on one piece of paper because I can drop them into films as I'm making films as well. Like a lot of people ask me about maintaining makeup in hot weather, like how to touch up makeup, how to make makeup last. And that really inspired me to think about a series of films as the summer's coming up, um, sort of based on those questions. So thank you again to everyone that has asked a question and that posted on the thing. And I hope that, um, I know I didn't manage to answer many, but I'll get, get there eventually. And um, I hope it was helpful.